Hello everybody, this is Nick from Bruto Bello and Carillon Audio Blog. I uh, stumbled across something new that I'm kind of digging here. It's called Cliffix. And um, what it is is it's a user remote script that somebody's written that allows you to do some extra things inside of Ableton. One of which is create MIDI um, racks which actually send sysx messages out to the real world. So I realized that I love my Korg DSS, gets some great sound, but I man do I press a lot of buttons when I program this thing. I thought it would be great to have all of these um, knobs right there in software, so I'd have a visual editor, something I could look at and easily take care of editing. Um, so it allowed me to do that. Basically, you know, behind the scenes what happens is you have to go into a specific text file that comes along with Cliffix and you have to give the exact um, sysx messages that need to be sent by each knob and then what you need to do is you need to to give a name to that knob within that text file and then you create a new MIDI, inst or MIDI effect rack with the name NK MIDI right here and then you can name it whatever you like afterwards and you'll name each macro what you want that specific message uh, which specific message you want sent out so the sysx message that you want sent out so I set up the sysx message for oscillator 1 volume on the Korg DSS and I called it os1 vol so that's what I did I created that. I created all of these MIDI racks to control every parameter on the uh, the DSS. And um, I also gave myself some notes over here, as you can see when I float over something, in case the uh, the name is a little obscure, it gives me, it tells me a uh, little overview of what that is. And as you can see, it took quite a bit of of racks to kind of get everything to happen. So I have my blue oscillator rack, or my blue oscillator based stuff here. The red is for my filter. Um, the tan is for my amp section, and then the delays are the yellow here. So what's nice is I can kind of quickly see it down here on the very bottom right, pan over wherever I want. Perfect. This is a really awesome thing. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be um, uploading an Ableton file with this, uh, with all of this stuff built in for you guys to download in case there's any other Ableton Korg DSS users like myself. But what really makes this thing quite handy is that there's another aspect of the CliffX um, system which is it allows you to take snapshots of macro settings. So basically, when I set, um, let me let me give you a quick. I'll just get some music playing here. Let me change some settings here, so you can see. Put that up. So there we go. What I can do now is I've set my settings the way I like it and I what I what you do is you create a clip called what the name is of the track or wh what you want it to be called. So I'm calling this DSS A because I'm going to have multiple presets or multiple patches if you will. And then you, you after that and that's in um, little brackets. After that there's a space and in parentheses the name of the track that you want to be affected a back or a front slash and then the word snap because it's going to take a snapshot and what it's going to take a snapshot of the de devices all of them so it's going to take a snapshot of all of these parameter settings that I've got going on here let me change the cutoff and the resonance so you can see some stuff happen so let me I have to press it strangely enough you got to press it twice so you start the clip and then you press it again and you can see the name gets all crazy there because it's just taken a snapshot of that. Um, once it's like that, next time you trigger it, it will recall all of those settings. So what I did is before I created a default patch 
as you can see by the name in, in brackets, DSS default. And I'm gonna hit that and it should bring all this stuff back to normal and bring the resonance and cutoff back to default settings here. So I, I press it once and actually trigger it. Bam, cut off back to 127, resonance back down to zero. Um, it's turned the noise volume down, all that sort of stuff. So now, I have kind of a default synth patch. If I want to go back to that first patch, my noise is back up, my octaves are back up, my cutoff is down to right there, and all of that. So as you can see, this could be pretty powerful because all within a software environment, you have complete recall of what's in what's going on inside of the Korg DSS, even to the aspect of the the oscillator multi samples that are being used. It gets to ch it can choose a, any of the sixteen that are loaded into memory. So you can pretty much program all of your stuff and save it all within Ableton, and be able to recall it. Uh, what's even nicer is that. I've noticed, you know, the Korg DSS gets a lot of zippery noises when you are changing sysx values in real time. So what ends up happening is you get, you can't do a lot of these parameter changes in real time um, as the note is sustaining. But if you change the parameters in between when the notes are playing, I don't really notice any sound. So it's nice. What I'm envisioning is being able to use it as a kind of it's like a like a preset chooser, you know, I'm choosing different presets or different patches. So it, it would be similar to sending program changes, but it can be, I don't know, at least it all recalls it in the specific um, live set that I'm working on. Sometimes what happens is I will pull up a preset and tweak it to my liking, write the bass riff, and then later realize I, I didn't record it well or something happened and want to go back and there you go, it's gone, you know, because I had taken an original preset and changed it slightly, modified it. One of the downsides is that this uh, CliffX, these macros are not bi-directional though, so it only works once I change the settings here, it changes it in the DSS, but if I, if I have a preset in the DSS that has, for instance, the noise volume at zero, it won't reflect that if I pull up something here and, and that's where it's set ahead of time, it won't reflect what's actively happening in the DSS, only what messages have been sent to the DSS. So, you know, not without its, its drawbacks, but a very cool, cool thing, I think. And um, yeah, like like I say, what I'm imagining is having at least a couple default clips here saved in my, in my library. Um, you know, so if I went into my library, and pulled up my clips and and um, created you know I could just drop that over there bam I've got I've got that clip now I can always drag it back in and create a default patch for me to start editing and all that very cool stuff um, you know the, those people who are doing this Python scripting stuff it's pretty amazing that they can do all this and it's very helpful and I really appreciate all their their hard work um, Hopefully this will be useful to you guys out there who get tired of pushing all the buttons on your Korg DSS and uh, are looking for something a little bit more fun. It is kind of nice, like I say, because it's almost like having a, a VST, you know, sort of instrument, a virtual instrument, because all of these settings can get recalled and it immediately sends them to your, to your DSS. So you're really getting some in-depth editing without even having to save patches or presets. Um, on on the device, on the DSS. So it's really cool. It can completely be recalled per project and you could create a bunch of clips over here where you've got a whole bunch of different programs that you've created that you want to be able to recall in other Ableton um, projects but you want to just pull the clip over and it'll send all of those default settings or the, all of those settings for the macros it'll send them to the DSS and it'll reprogram your synth exactly the way you wanted it or had it in another session. So very cool stuff, stuff that, um, I don't know, I just look at it as a second level of being able to program the synth that, it, that you can't do um, right on the device itself. Anyway, like always, hope you enjoy this. Hope that you guys are, get some use out of it and that um, 
you're making good music. Uh, you know, check out my blog if you haven't checked it out. Check out my music. I'm doing a project, Bruto Bello, where I'm I'm doing a song a week, which is really keeping me active and busy um, to write and produce a song every week. And uh, yeah, I've got some cool stuff. Hopefully there's other tips that'll be good to you. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a good one. Bye.